Hi, it's Penny Robinson again and this is a video talking about how I think teachers can support autistic students. The first point is to be understanding and flexible. So whether this is around assignment deadlines or behaviour in the class and also if a student is having issues Try not to go to discipline straight away. Try to quickly problem solve to see if they're being a rat, rat bag because the noise in the classroom is too much, for instance. Another point is that sometimes simple, quick, cheap adjustments can help. I also have sensory processing disorder and I'm sensitive to light and sound. So... When I'm at autism events, I often wear my Asperger's Victoria cap. I also often use my noise cancelling headphones. I have in-ear ones, so they're quite discreet. Some students like massive earmuffs, which make everything nice and quiet. I don't like the feel of the thing over the top of my head so I don't use them for too long. If a kid's restless, things like a wobble chair might be useful so they can be wobbling but sitting in their spot on the mat. Other students might find fidget toys useful. So I have a wooden tangle and also a, a normal plastic tangle and I have them in my bag if I need to use them because we're wanting students to focus. So if fidgeting with one hand allows them to do their work with the other, that's a good solution. And another thing is to not force eye contact. I'm quite happy looking at someone while they're talking, but some other people prefer not to be looking or they prefer to be writing while they're doing something else. I'm well known of being the Twitter queen at conferences because I like that gives me something to concentrate on and I seem to have the knack for taking a photo and summarising what someone's saying. And also it's important to consider different communication methods. Verbal communication is the default com method of communication, but sometimes it's important to be able to write and things like that. So I have an app on my tablet called Emergency Chat that allows me to type if I prefer to. Other points are to have a quiet spot that a student can get away from the crowd and the noise, especially at, at lunchtime. If recess and lunch are tricky, having clubs or activities a few days a week can be a good solution. I found it easier to socialise in context and with people with a common interest. I was in the school orchestra and the school choir, so that meant that I got to meet students from all year levels and make friends with lots of other students, but it also meant that two lunchtimes a week I had choir practice, so I had something to do at lunchtime. And in the transition period when I was in year 12 and I still had another year to go, and the rest of my cohort were in serious countdown mode. I found the Year 12 common room at that time quite uncomfortable because I wasn't in the same mindset of I'm finishing school in three weeks as everybody else. So I spent a lot of time hanging around with some of my friends in Year 8 from orchestra just because we could then just be talking about everyday stuff and what was happening in orchestra and things like that. In high school with so many teachers, 
It's also important to have a go-to teacher so when problems arise, the student knows who to go to. I had the school counsellor and I also had the year, I also had the house coordinator. And occasionally we'd need to ring mum during school hours to sort something out. But normally we were able to sort stuff out amongst ourselves. And especially at primary school level, when the parents are doing more of the advocacy for their kids than their kids are, it's also important to remember that many autistic students have autistic parents. So while they're advocating for their child, they might not react to you the way you expect. So remember that there are autistic kids, but there are also autistic adults. Mm -hmm.